following is a production of DallasCowboys.com and the Dallas Cowboys Football Club. How about this, Cowboys? Yeah! Women empower women. We're daughters, wives, sisters, and mothers making strides in our own lives. We're women in sports, and what matters to you matters to us. Let's talk about it all on The Playmaker. Welcome to The Playmaker. I am Nikki Harrison, and I am so excited because it's Women's History Month, and I get to speak with some ladies in sports who are trailblazers and breaking down barriers. And today, joining me is Sarah Fuller, soccer goalkeeper and football placekeeper for the Vanderbilt Commodores, the first woman to play and score in a Power 5 college football game. Wow. Sarah, thank you so much for joining me. How awesome does it feel to do something so fabulous for the first time? Well, thank you for having me. Um, it, it's been really amazing. Uh, it took me a little while to like acknowledge like this was such a big deal. Um, I think my when I took that first kick, I, I realized uh, the significance of it when everybody in the stadium was cheering for me, um, even though it was an away game. Uh, so that was just really amazing moment. Oh, I can only imagine. And your story, I have to tell you, it's it was such a bright light in a year that had so much sadness. And I mean, a football season that we really just didn't even know was going to happen. Tell me, um, how did this happen? Why did the football team need you? Yeah, so um, I had just come from the SEC tournament with the, my soccer team. Um, and we, we won the whole thing, which was awesome. And I, we came home that Monday um, and I was packing up, getting ready to go home for Christmas break. And I saw a missed call from my assistant coach. Um, and so I called him back and I was like, I'm in trouble. What's going on? <laughs> and uh, he's like, hey, uh, you know, the, the kicking team got hit by COVID, um, wiped a lot of them out. All they have is a placeholder, um, a long snapper, and they need a kicker. Um, and so they asked me if I would come and try out. And so within like 30 minutes of that phone call, I was out there on the field uh, taking field goals. And, um, you know, I think I made like 12 out of 15 and uh, they, you know, suited me up and were like, all right, you're on the football team. So <laughs> that is so cool. Now, now, had you ever like kicked a football just for fun? I mean, yeah, for for fun, but I had never thought of playing football or doing anything like that. Um, one time I do recall is uh, about a year ago, uh, a little before this time, uh, me and my teammate, uh, Sophie, she's another goalkeeper. We were um, taking field goals with the soccer ball and we'd work our way back like five yards at a time. And I got all the way back to the 50, I believe, um, and like made every single one on my way back. And I was like, I guess I could do this. And <laughs> well, I did <laughs> read, <laughs> I did read where you said you may have manifested this into reality because you were watching the football game, one of the football games and said, I, I guess I could do that. So <laughs> do you really think you might've manifested it? <laughs> yeah, I do. It was so funny because I was with all my soccer teammates and then um, I was like, I think I could. And they're like, Oh no. And, and then, like, literally three days later, I, I was getting a phone call um, from the football coach. <laughs> that is so wild. So now, wild. I'm not the smartest when it comes to soccer, but I did hear you mention that you all uh, won the SEC tournament title. And I read that that was the first time since 1994. So congratulations on that. That is Thank awesome. You. So, I mean, like, seriously, what did your mom say when you told her that, you know, okay, well, I'm about to possibly suit up for a football game on the heels of winning the soccer title? <laughs> what did she well, say? Well, it's so funny because uh, my parent, my whole family was driving back from the, the soccer tournament when I called them. Um, and I know for a fact they weren't expecting that. Um <laughs> And my mom was really, really nervous. Um, you can see like video of her like standing there in the stands like this at the football game, like waiting for me. Um, but she was really excited and um, she kept telling me, you know, she's like, you you can do this. Like you're, you have the mindset and you have the capability. And um, so it was really awesome to get that encouragement from her. Of course. Um, and just like that boost of confidence from her. Oh, I love that. Now, um, 
when you say you manifested it, <laughs> did you have any idea what you were going to be doing just for women in sports? No, I mean, I feel like I was kind of naive to it for a little bit because um, I I was just going in to help the football team. I didn't really think much more of it. Um, they weren't like, oh, you're a girl doing this. It was like, you're an athlete. You can kick. We know you're good at kicking. Like, please help us. And I was like, yes, of course, I'll help you. Um, <laughs> so then when like people are telling me like, Sarah, you're going to be like a Jeopardy question one day or like, you know, this is like a big deal. Like this is really hasn't um, been done before in a power five football game. So um, it slowly started hitting me. Um, and then when I announced it on social media and like, my follower count just like blew up. It was, um, I was like, okay, yeah, this is, <laughs> this is a pretty big deal. Um, but it's been, it's been really cool. All the people have come up to me and, and said that like I've impacted them or I've inspired like this little girl or this dad with all girls is like, you know, rooting for his, his little girls now. And so it's, it's been really cool. Oh, that's so awesome. Now, Sarah, do you feel with with all, everything that has changed and all the attention that you've you've gotten, do you feel a little sense of responsibility now to continue to trailblaze and break down barriers? Yeah, for sure. I mean, um, you know, we just had like the issue with the NCAA tournament and everything with the, the women's basketball. And, um, you know, I feel like I, as a female athlete have a responsibility to bring light to issues such as that. And, um, you know, if I could have taken all the attention that I got from like the, the football game and, and put that on the SEC tournament with my soccer team and, and all the hard work um, my teammates have done and, and just the hardworking women that are involved and um, with my soccer team, I think that would have been amazing. So I just want to continue to bring light to women's sports and, um, women in sports, whether it's, you know, journalism or whatever. Um, they're so important and um, just want to continue bringing attention to that. I love that. I mean, you're so inspiring and your generation is really inspiring because you're not afraid to stand up for what you believe in and, 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 and really fight for equality. And I, I love that. I mean, because that was brave what those young ladies did um, with the NCAA basketball yeah that was that was very brave um now when you were playing you chose to wear play like a girl on your helmet tell me what that is all about yeah so um there's this nonprofit uh based in nashville i am pretty sure they're throughout the united states but um i had met with them a few years ago and was thinking about working for them or uh interning for them and um, I just love their foundation. They they work with young girls and encouraging them to play sports because um, sports is so vital to, you know, making friends and, and learning about teamwork and um, taking criticism and all kinds of stuff. So uh, I just loved what they did and, and the way that um, they use mentors um, for like women in STEM with younger girls so they can get more exposure to fields such as that. And uh, the Vandy football team, everybody had something written on the back of their helmet. Um, it was like Black Lives Matter or bring attention to Alzheimer's or whatever. And um, so I walked in and I was like, I want to play like a girl on the back of my helmet. And they're like, oh, why? And I was like, well, it's a really awesome nonprofit. Like, we're going to do it. And I think it's cool because play like a girl has, you know, you play like a girl has been like an insult at times. Mm -hmm. um, when I was growing up, you know, you, you told that you run like a girl, you play like a girl is an insult. And now it's, I'm changing the tide and, and I love what they're doing um, with this nonprofit being named that. Um, so bringing attention to them and, and that saying that it's no longer an insult to play like a girl. Um, it's such a huge compliment um, because women are so hardworking and um, we've had to push past all these barriers for so many years. And I think that makes us that much stronger. Um, and so I just really wanted to bring attention to that. Oh, I love that. That is so fabulous. And I just love how you're so all about empowering women and especially little girls. Cause I mean, they, uh, it's just beautiful. I love it. So, but for <laughs> women's history month, you're getting the opportunity to do something fabulous. You're going to be a part of a panel. Um, ladies, what is it? Ladies first breaking down barriers. And you're going to be with our very own executive vice president, Charlotte Jones. Tell me all about that. What's that going to be about? 
Yeah, so I'm really excited about that. Um, I think I'm, you know, hopping on later and uh, going to film some for I unfortunately can't make it because I have class, but um, <laughs> I'm excited to be a part of it and uh, talk to, um, be able to share a little bit about my story um, with some some middle school age kids and um, kind of bring attention to, you know, women's equality mm -hmm. and, and that it's awesome for young girls to um, play sports and do whatever they want. Um because they, they can't. <laughs> Absolutely. So yeah, I'm really excited about it. <laughs> uh oh. And um, middle school is such an important age because that is, e even though it starts younger, the insecurities, but middle school, I feel like, is right when those insecurities take hold. So to have someone like you speaking to them and sharing your story. I know that's going to be very, very impactful. That's so great. And something else that was very awesome that you, you had a busy year. Um, very awesome yes. for you <laughs> at the beginning of this year was you were invited to participate in President Joe Biden's inauguration and you introduced Vice President Kamala Harris. Another first for us females. Yes. How cool was that? Uh, that was really awesome. Um, you know, I had to go and get my power suit and look all, you know, <laughs> sophisticated. Um, but that that was really amazing that they thought of me um, a, a first, introducing another first. Um, and that was just really amazing opportunity. And again, just brings light to um, the fact that, you know, young girls, women can do anything. Um, you know, it, we have a female vice president, we have female kicker, like things are possible. Um, and, and we're seeing that, uh, it's like on the big stage now for the first time. And I think that's really awesome. Um, and it's just hopefully inspiring then the next generation to come. I love that. That's fabulous. Now, um, have you gotten used to all of this attention it, it, or is life sort of a little bit trying to get back to normal? <laughs> <laughs> um, it's, it, you know, I'll be out with brec at breakfast or something and someone will ask for a picture. Uh, so that's, you know, different. <laughs> I'm not used to that. Um, but I love it. I, I love taking pictures with, with people who, you know, and they tell me about their story and how they heard about me and how I've inspired them. And I just think that's so cool because I never in a million years would have thought that I would be an inspiration um, like this to others. So that's been really cool, but uh, we've I've gotten back into soccer. Um, we have our NCAA tournament coming up in April, so um, that's kind of normal for me. I've done that my whole life, so I, I love it, and I love my teammates, and um, I love being out there on the pitch with them and um, just playing my game. <laughs> I love that. So you're a senior, honor student. That's fabulous. Um, <laughs> studying medicine, health, and society. What is next yeah. for you? What's the future hold for Sarah? Um, well, I have two years of eligibility left. We got a COVID year um, and I redshirted my freshman year. So I committed to uh, University of North Texas to get my master's mm. um, and I'll finish my remaining years of eligibility playing soccer there. So I'm really excited to get back to Texas and, um, and do my thing with them and um, further my education. So, uh, and, you know, hopefully in the, in the future, if uh, things continue to go well, I would love to, um, you know, play professional soccer at some point. So that, uh, that is something I am really working for right now. Very cool. Well, you said North Texas, that's my alma mater. So welcome to the mean green. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We're killing it in basketball. Too. <laughs> that, that's right. That is so right. So you're a local gal. Um, right here from Wiley, Texas, not far from the Ford Center here in Frisco. Uh, Wiley High graduate. You've got to tell mm -hmm. me what AMO means. Um, so I think that there's like a story behind it. Um, Coach Schaefer, you know, kind of invented it when we won our first, I think, Texas championship. Um, and it, it means like, I'm going to kick your butt. <laughs> <laughs> Other people have acronyms for it, but I, I love I'm going to kick your butt. Um, and, you know, I've kind of, like, lived by that. I love it. Um, and I love uh, Wiley High and, like, how I've raised in that – I've been raised in that city and, um, you know, the traditions that are go with that school. So uh, it's been fantastic to kind of bring the spotlight back to them and uh, and all that they've done as well. And because I, I grew up there. I went to school there. So it was awesome. Absolutely. That's so cool because – I have seen it on car stickers and t-shirts. So it's a big deal, Amo. That's, that's really awesome.
Um, <laughs> now, in celebration of Women's History Month, tell me, who are some women in your life who have influenced you? Um, you know, I'd love to say, like, my mom, uh, especially. She um, has worked so hard, and uh, she's a teacher, a uh, seventh-grade English teacher, and uh, I just see the passion that she has for the younger generation and um, how hard she works to achieve her goals. It's it's really cool. And um, I'm thankful that I've kind of adapted that mentality because she, she's she got a no-quit attitude, um, which I, I love about her. Um, and then also I, I think of like our uh, athletic director here at Bandy, uh, Candice Lee, Dr. Candice Lee. She's incredible in the way she stepped in and um, just really – She's really transforming um, the school here and the athletic department um, and just the way she leads with like such a she has an open door policy. You can step in and talk to her at any time. And um, I just think she's really amazing and, and a perfect example of a, a great leader. That's so cool. Now, before I let you go, I have to ask you um, for all of the young girls who are following you, watching you, um, daring to one day do something that no one has ever done. Um, cause I know you didn't set out to break history and be so monumental. Um, what do you, what do you say to them? Um, I'd say that if you have a goal and you want to achieve something, uh, don't let anybody tell you no. Um, cause there were a lot of times on the soccer field specifically, you know, I was injured or I was told I wasn't going to travel or, you know, whatever it is. And, um, even with kicking, I have gotten a lot of hate, um, for some of the stuff that you're not a good enough kicker, all this stuff, mm -hmm. but, um, you can't listen to that. If, if it's something you're really passionate about, you need to, you can push past those, those barriers, those negative comments. And, um, I think that makes you that much stronger and it makes, once you get to, you reach your goal that much better in the end, because you look back and you're like, Oh, look at all those obstacles I faced. And I got through them. And I am good enough to be here. I am strong enough to do this. And um, so there might be obstacles in the way and it might be hard at times, but just keep pushing through and uh, you, you will reach your goal and it'll be that much better. Mm, that is so fabulous. Well, I tell you, you're a true inspiration and congratulations to you for everything that has come your way. And I wish you the best of luck in the future. Best of luck in April for your tournament. Um, thank you so much for chatting with me today. This, this has really been great. Yeah, thank you for having me. This of, is awesome. Of course. Thank you for watching. I'm Nikki Harrison with The Playmaker. We'll see you next time.